You are tuned to ARP on the Accelerated Radio Network. It's 12 noon, and it's time to have lunch. Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Bringing money talk you can understand. And now here's your host, Miss Charlene. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Miss Charlene, and welcome to Lunch with the Finance Bunch. Today we have our accountant in the house, Corey Kaiser. How you doing? I'm good. It's tax time again, and um, we're so happy to have you here. Thank you. So that you can help get us through this, what could be very stressful time if we don't have the right tax person to help us. Okay. (laughs) And usually stressful for those of us who are helping. Definitely, (laughs) definitely, definitely. But um, the first question I wanted to ask you, because we haven't seen you in a while, is how you're doing. I'm good. I'm good, yeah. you know, still, still, you know, still here. Okay. You know, my head is bloody but unbowed. <laughs> and, you know, business, business has been going well. There's That's been good. some uh, real nice indicators for growth for the business, and, you know, I'm hoping I can hold on. That's great. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations. Well, hopefully this show will help with that because we believe in you. Definitely. Oh, well, that's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. Uh-oh. <laughs> So give us a refresher on your business. Tell us what exactly you do. Uh, I'm an accountant. I have a a very small uh, uh, accounting, bookkeeping, tax business services organization. Uh, I like to call it a business services organization more so than just a tax service or an accounting service because, Mm -hmm. you know, there are different levels of need that different businesses require. Right. You know, and as a result, some people don't necessarily need the accounting and bookkeeping component, mm-hmm. whereas they might need the the compliance issues. You know, how do I make sure that I'm current with my workers' compensation? I don't know how to do those forms, or I don't have time to do those forms. Mm-hmm. So they can also give me a lot of that kind of stuff, and I try to keep a lot of the bureaucratic red tape that, you know, hinders a lot of small businesses. I try yes. to make sure that that stuff is right and they're properly insulated with the insurances and the workers' comps and the uh, city licenses and things like that. Right. Um, something that I've noticed that uh, small businesses might get into, have a little challenge with, is is this person an employee or aren't they? Mm-hmm. And the tax um, challenges with that. You know, so could you tell us a little bit about how we could stay within the parameters or what, how do you decipher who is an employee and who isn't, who is a, uh, a contracted person and who's an employee and what's the difference? Could you tell us that? Yeah. From a business and accounting standpoint, Mm -hmm. employees are people that the company actually hires. Okay. Okay. At the time that they're brought on board, they're given a W-4 to fill out. Mm -hmm. The company withholds income taxes and essentially at that point in time recognizes that person as an agent of the business. Okay. Working for whatever their goals are. An independent contractor is someone who can come in who is not necessarily an employee. Mm -hmm. Okay. They can come on board and they can provide whatever their services are for the organization without the organization having to incur a lot of the uh, uh, secondary responsibilities other than just paying the person. Mm -hmm. In a nutshell, the best way to kind of decide who's an employee versus who isn't Mm -hmm. is to decide on how much control that person has on those responsibilities. You know, if they're using their own tools, if they're bringing their own laptops and they're bringing their own, you know, devices necessary to do the job, right. that's one indicator that they are, in fact, an independent contractor. Right. Uh, essentially, the more control you put on that person, the less and less independent they become. Right. You so see? if you're restricting them to only working with you, if you're restricting their hours and, you know... Right. That type of thing. Right. If you're providing the supplies, the supplies, they've got the computers, sit there, be here from X time to this time, this is your lunch break, and so on and so forth. Okay. Then you can actually find yourself in a little bit of trouble because what you think is a 1099 independent contractor, mm-hmm. by law, isn't. Okay. Because the person isn't allowed to self-govern, if you will. Right. You know. So like I said, the more 
chains you put on this person that might not be the right thing to say but, you know the, the it's more, a visual it's a visual yeah <laughs> the more control that you enact on top of this person as far as like I said when and where to go when to be uh, how to do the procedures and things like that right the, the more separated they become from being an actual independent contractor okay okay because I know sometimes that is a gray area for some people yeah they're not sure which so I'm glad you explained that for all of us yeah yeah Mm -hmm. so um Nathan did you have any questions you look like you had something to say oh no not yet okay I will though intensely listening (laughs) yes (laughs) and so what are the benefits um of hiring an employee versus having an independent contracted person is are there any benefits to that other than the control factor do you think you know honestly there probably are several Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think the control factor is probably going to be the best one okay if you have a bunch of independent contractors walking around coming in when they want leaving when they want uh, using their own software their own tools and things like that Mm -hmm. you probably wind up compromising a lot of quality control in whatever your end product is. Right. So, uh, you know, some businesses would probably feel more comfortable in having employees that they can train the way they want things done. Uh, uh, the procedure is done in a very, very methodical and specific way. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and they're able to, you know, make sure that what they're doing is what they want them to be doing. Right. You for know. that specific amount of time. Yeah, yeah, for that specific amount of time. <laughs> right. When you have an independent contractor, you know, the independent contractor knows, well, you know, I'm freelancing, so I'm going to mm-hmm. come in, I'm going to help this company out with whatever it is that they need, but I'm going to bring my software, I'm going to bring my computer, I'm going to do it the way I want to do it, and they'll just get, you know, the end product or the finished product, and then they'll just take it and do what they want with it. Right. But it, not, not, it might not be exactly the way they want it to be done. Right. Yeah. Okay. So those are the advantages and disadvantages of both. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. There may right. be others, but. But yeah. those are the big ones. Yeah. Those, those are the big ones. The, okay. Yeah. That's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, um, you know, as a small business, sometimes small businesses don't have the cash flow yeah, to absolutely. have, you know, permanent employees. So they'll hire independent contractors to help them with their businesses, at least in the beginning, you know, yes, and then and doing the interim until they get to a space where they're profitable and they know what that profit margin is and it starts to take shape. Exactly. You know, they might want to um, use an independent contractor. You know, and, and that's fine mm-hmm. as long as, like I said, the company can withstand that lack of control. Yes, You know, and a definitely. lot of times, especially with small startup businesses, quality control can be a very big Challenge. component to yeah. them you know reaching the next level right that's and if they true. can and if they can afford to allow people kind of like i said to come and go as they want mm-hmm. then fine right. you know uh and it'll also save them some money because if i only need you for five mm-hmm. hours instead of a full eight hours or something along those lines right. you can give the person those mm-hmm. hours control your cost flow mm-hmm. and you don't have to incur a lot of the uh, workers' compensations and you know sick leaves and you know and those types the, of the things. secondary costs that employees are going to require from mm-hmm. employers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, and I think that you're seeing more and more independent contractors um, who are working within companies and doing that very thing because. Um, companies don't necessarily need them for an eight-hour day, 40 hours a week, you know, or 30 hours or 40 hours a week, and they don't want to incur that cost. So a lot of times it'll be specific to what they need the person for, you know, like an accountant, you know, or, you know, a bookkeeper or or something like that, or, um, you know, photographers, you Mm -hmm. know. There's a lot of people who... What's the difference between there's um, independent contractors obviously, but then there's also, like, let's say that I have someone come in and build my website or something like that, and it's just, like, a project that I have someone do, and I know that there's a section somewhere within the the mess of taxes (laughs) that small businesses have to do where you can put in professional fees and you can actually write off certain expenses. Mm -hmm. Um, Where is that line for small business owners? Well, Well, I'll tell you. If they're just one-off jobs like a website or maybe painting something or something along Mm -hmm. those lines, uh, they aren't necessarily employees. You're not going to cover that person 
with workers' compensation and all those different kind of things. Mm -hmm. Generally, people like that would be covered under the general umbrella policy in case mm -hmm. they fall and you know hurt mm -hmm. themselves or something along those lines. Uh, you're not going to give a guy who's only going to be in your office for a week or so to do one particular thing, you know, sick leave and vacation and right. you know 401k opportunities and such. <laughs> yeah. So. You know, when they're those types of situations where they're just coming in to do a job, they're probably their own business, they're mm -hmm. their own mm -hmm. incorporated entity, or maybe they're independent contractors, whatnot. Mm -hmm. And you just can come in, have them, you know, agree to whatever the terms are, and when they're done, you just pay them. Now, a 1099 should be produced at uh, year end mm -hmm. for anyone that you pay $600 or more to as far as compensation goes. Got it. Okay, mm -hmm. that's kind of the the demarcation the line if you will mm -hmm. and it's regarded for uh line seven or box seven on the 1099 for actual compensation not necessarily for reimbursements or a uh, cost of goods sold items or things like that mm. because yeah. you might have a guy paint something or build a website i don't know if there's any real raw materials that go into websites but let's say he's painting and he gets brushes and rollers and the paint and things like that and the paint might cost four or five hundred dollars, but it's a three or four hundred dollar job. Mm -hmm. You see, even though the check that you write the guy is for more than that six hundred dollars, the compensation component of it isn't enough to cause a ten ninety nine to mm. be produced because half the money is actually just reimbursing him for, for supplies and materials. Exactly. Oh, we're learning a lot here. Yeah, that's yeah. great. That's great. <laughs> All right. And so. With um, in order for your um, in order to get taxes done on time, is it too late to hire an accountant right now? No, it's not. Okay. It's not. <laughs> Interestingly enough, tax season, even though it's busy season for accountants, mm -hmm. tax season is kind of bowl shaped. At least it has been in in in, in my career. Okay. You've got the people who rush in at the very beginning of tax season, and then those people who rush in beat down my door and up until about now okay and then it just kind of tapers off or plateaus and i get a few you know here and there and then right around the end of march you get your last minute rush you see okay. so right now if people haven't turned in their stuff it might be a good time to turn, to turn in, in their stuff because it can you turn wait, around quickly yeah, if you wait a little bit longer another couple of weeks you're not going to be able to find me. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be hiding from people probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or getting those extensions out. Or getting extensions out. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So the best time to get your taxes done um, is like around now. So like from the end of February to the m beginning, middle of March, um, it, you know, where you don't run into the traffic jam. Right. Right now I'm sending emails to a lot of my clients uh, uh, regulars that I have that I have not yet heard from. That you know uh, are going to come sliding in exactly. the last week of March. Exactly. You, you know, know, I'm kind of sitting in there, a hey, panic. <laughs> yeah, hey, get me your stuff now. You know, right. I'm, I'm, I'm up for air. So you know, if you can get it into me now, I can get it in, get it done, get it out, and get you taken care of. Yeah. yeah. You know, don't be upset with me when you, you know, come on board at, you know, April the 10th or the 11th and you know, you've got to get put in the pile. Yes, you yes, know. yes. We all when know When are those. taxes officially due? Without an extension? Without an extension. April 15th for individuals. Mm -hmm. Corporate taxes are due March 15th. Oh, okay. Yeah, so corporate is due March 15th. Individuals mm -hmm. are due April 15th. And nonprofits are due uh, uh, May 15th. Oh. So the 15th of every month, mm -hmm. uh, months three, four, and five. Okay. And see, that's also why it's kind of a challenge to make sure that you get into me now because corporate taxes are going to be due in about, what, 10 days? Right. Yeah, in that's about right. 10 days. So, so all kinda, your corporations that you do business right. with are at your doorstep right now yeah. to get you to. Exactly. Yeah, help you them see. out. They're the la This is their last minute. That's exactly right. Right. And those are the ones that I'm emailing. Come on, give me your stuff, please. Mm -hmm. Give it to me. Right. Because <laughs> I need more than ten days. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, and you know, cor you know, corporate taxes are the big bulk of IRS revenue. You yeah. Know, it's not the you know mom and pops and the little people that right. make this. It's the big companies that make a lot of money. Right. And as a result, once that stuff is in and out, mm -hmm. 
I can actually I didn't want to say it quite like this because it it it, it is so much of a huge part of you know IRS revenue. Mm-hmm. It's a lot more scrutinized. The scrutiny is a lot more. Right. So it's not as easy to do a corporation's eleven twenty. Right. Than it is to do your ten ten forty exactly. Yeah. So I can knock out your ten forty, and you know, depending on how complex and sophisticated your situation is, mm-hmm. I can probably get it done in a matter of a couple of hours. Right. But corporations aren't quite the same. No. You know, they want to make sure that numbers tie in, and right. you know, if you did this and did that, then it should have this result. Why doesn't it? Right. You know, they're scrutinized a little bit heavier. 